Majni and I'm a mental health coach for a programme known as the Thrive Programme and today I wanted to create a video to talk about a mental illness which goes by the name of emetophobia. Emetophobia is also commonly known as sickness phobia or vomit phobia. For the ease of this video I will refer to the phobia as emetophobia and within the programme we call sufferers of this phobia emetophobes. Have you heard of emetophobia? Probably not. To make things simple, I will start with a definition. Emetophobia is an extreme fear of throwing up. It's important to know the difference between a phobia and a fear. A fear is a natural, reasonable emotion that feels slightly uncomfortable. So how most of us would feel about being sick? We don't particularly like the idea of being sick and if possible, we would avoid it. This phobia, however, is an irrational, out of proportion reaction to being sick. People with emetophobia would do everything in their power to avoid being sick. This becomes a problem because like any other anxiety related mental illness, it impacts their day to day life. It can impact their social group, them leaving the house, and is usually associated with very high social anxiety. You can imagine how all these factors would impact a person's life, especially since being sick is something you really cannot control. Now that we've spoken a little bit about the definition of what metaphobia is, and I've given you a little bit of an introduction to the phobia, I'd like to speak about the cause, because why is it that some people have such an extreme phobia of being sick, and others are perfectly fine? It's estimated that about 2% of the population suffer with metaphobia. Within the Thrive Programme, we've realised that the main reason for this is because of the negative thinking styles, and therefore poor management of the thinking. This isn't actually just in relation to being sick, it's usually in relation to other aspects. For example, you may have a student who's severely stressed and really catastrophizes exams. And every time they have an exam, they brood about it, which means they constantly think negative thoughts about the exam. And then we catastrophize, like I said, which means take it out of proportion and out of control. And the thing is, if they do this in one aspect of their life, they're likely to follow this pattern of thinking through in other aspects of their life, such as friendship groups, social dynamics, and also being sick in some cases with emetophobia. The thing is that the more and more negative thinking styles that are implemented by a person, the more and more likely it is for that person to have anxiety and therefore causing the phobia. Another big cause of emetophobia is having a high desire of control. Emetophobes want to feel like they're in control of everything, as they believe they couldn't deal with an outcome that they haven't prepared for. In fact, this is why emetophobia doesn't stem from a fear of sickness, but a fear of being out of control. What emetophobes really fear is having no control if they were to throw up, and therefore not being able to cope with the situation. The most visible change in all emetophobes getting over their emetophobia is a growth in the mindset and skills to cope with the situations in life where the outcomes are beyond their control. Now that you have had a crash course in what the phobia is and what it is caused by, I'd like to talk a little bit about it in practice. The traits I'm going to discuss are based on what I have seen coaching clients and also living with my sister, an ex-emetophobe. Nearly every emetophobe I have met has safety-seeking foods. You might be asking yourself, what could a safe food possibly be? And is there really such a thing? Well, these are just foods that the emetophobe believes will help them avoid sickness. They also tend to have foods which they believe will always make them sick and therefore stay away from them. The most common food group being meat. Other common foods are those that are difficult to eat or avoided, i.e. spaghetti, and any food that is close to its sell-by date. This is the reason why so many people with this phobia are obsessed with checking food labels before eating. Most people with this phobia are also super aware of sickness bugs going around. This leads to behaviours like excessively cleaning and washing hands. This helps avoid germs, which they think have the possibility of making them ill and sick. 
A lot of emetophobes I have worked with also checked hygiene ratings before visiting a restaurant for the same reasons. Another huge trait of emetophobes is social anxiety. This includes avoiding eating in public and sitting near to an exit or bathroom. This may seem like a strange one to anyone who is unfamiliar with emetophobia, as what does an exit have to do with being sick? But the reason for this is that most people with a fear of sickness are not only scared of being sick alone, but also in front of other people and therefore look for a place where they can leave easily if needed. Many emetophobes also heavily rely on a trusted few individuals for reassurance in their avoidance of being sick. My sister would ask questions like, do I look pale today? What is my temperature like? Or what is the side effect of this medication? Upon recovery, I asked her why these questions were asked on such a regular basis. And she said that she had felt like it had given her more control over the avoidance of being sick. And that's the basics on what emetophobia is and the symptoms associated with it. If you or anyone that you know is suffering with emetophobia, be sure to check out the link in the description below or have a look at the Thrive Programme website and you can get in touch with one of our Thrive Programme coaches via that website. Mm -hmm.